Last time we were out in the boat, uh, we had the port side engine overheat. Had to shut it down and uh, get back in. And on coming back uh, to the dock, we discovered that uh, there was no coolant in the heat exchanger. There was uh, no coolant in the bilge, so um, it's obviously gone somewhere and the only possible place uh, it could have gone without being in the bilge was out through the heat exchanger. So we're going to have to um, pull the heat exchanger apart and uh, have it tested see what the problem is. Well, first thing we're going to need um, to do is to take the remaining coolant out of the engine. So we'll need a good sized bucket. Um, I think probably about 10 or 15 litres uh, of coolant to come out of the heat exchanger. But we'd better get rid of that first. Now I'm going to take uh, one of the front hoses off the bottom of the heat exchanger. There is a bung in the bottom of these, you can get the water out uh, through, but it's a little bit messier that way. I think by taking the hose off the bottom of the motor I can get most of the coolant into the bucket. It's pretty greasy, ordinary stuff. Don't want to get too much of it on it. And uh, whatever drops into the bilge has to be cleaned up before we do the job. So I'll show you where I take that hose off. I've just been told off. I've got to put another shirt on because this is one of my good ones. Okay, an old shirt and uh, another pair of glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's better. Before we do uh, any work on the coolant side of the motor, especially uh, when it involves the raw water side, it's always a good idea to turn your seacock off. Okay, Isolate the salt water coming into your, into your engine and then um, you're not going to get any flooding in the bilge or anything like that. So make sure you turn that seacock off. Get the hose clamp undone. Pretty easily, work it a bit. Maybe undo the hose clamp a little bit more. Okay, once we've drained that out I can put that hose clamp back on because we've got the, um, the level of the coolant in there down to something where we can work around it. So if I put this clamp back on, I'll put the hose back on and what I'm going to do is do up the hose clamp as well so I don't forget it later down the track. you can see the coolant looks in pretty good nick but um, I'm going to use this opportunity to uh, put new coolant in the engines probably about time I do test these this coolant regularly with uh, a, uh, a little test kit but uh, it's probably a good idea to uh, change it every now and then as well Okay, the next job is to uh, remove the rubber boots from the end of the heat exchanger and from the end of the tube nest. So there's two hose clips each end and all of those hose clips have to be loosened. Once 
once you've got them loose with a bit of work they'll come apart now you can see this is the body of the heat exchanger and this is the tube nest that we've got to take out take the back one off as well Okay, so we've got the caps out now. The good thing, it looks like the um, nest of tubes is going to come out pretty easy. As you can see it's quite loose in there. And that's probably from having good quality coolant in the motor all the time. If you look after your coolant, keep the um, additive in there. Make sure that it's got the uh, non-corrosive antifreeze additive in there you'll find that it looks after all the internal galleries in your motor and your heat exchanger. If I hadn't done that, you'd probably find this was a little bit uh, seized up and you'd probably have to give it a bit of a whack with a block of wood and a hammer or something like that to get it out. So uh, I'm, a bit, um, I'm a bit happy that that is still pretty loose in that, um, in that heat exchanger. So, I'll have to take it out from the back and you can see I can just pretty well slide it out. So so there you go, there's your nest of tubes. You can see all the fine tubes in there. Salt water would go through the middle of them and your coolant runs around the outside. And there's a little bit of muck on it, but um, it's not in too bad a nick. Hopefully, when I get this pressure tested, um, they might be alright. They look alright from the outside, but of course, that doesn't tell you what's going in on inside the tube stack. So, we'll get them back to uh, core cooling, get them to run a pressure test on it for me, and uh, see what occurs. While I've got this uh, tube stack out, I'm just going to have a bit of a look inside the heat exchanger. And it all looks pretty good in there. A little bit of sludge in that around, but um, for um, 16 years, it's pretty good. tube stack to core cooling. They're the people that uh, did the marinisation on the motors and uh, they're probably the best place to build a new stack. Uh, I like dealing with these guys. I've had the motors in the boats for 16 years, been an excellent conversion and every time I've had to contact them about something, the service is excellent. So uh, definitely a good company to deal with. So uh, I'm with Sam from Core Cooling. I brought my tube bundle in here uh, and they're going to pressure test it. There is a leak somewhere in the system. It's not leaking into the build, so I sort of suspect that it's through the uh, tube bundle. But uh, Sam's going to do it. How do you do that, Sam? Uh, we do that by injecting air into a pressure vessel. Um, for a heat exchanger, we do test pressure at about one and a half times that of running. So about 30 psi, or we'll max out at. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put it under water and we'll look for it much in the same way as we will as a leak with the tyre. Just look for the air bubbles that come up. You can imagine as well that once this is, is in the heat exchanger and the heat exchanger is doing its function, which is to heat up and cool down, as the metal expands and contracts, that, worse will, that leak will worsen um, and become a lot more prominent in the system. Okay, well, uh, I'm back from core cooling. Unfortunately, the tube stack failed test. And... <laughs> It's a little bit expensive, these are $800 a piece. But look, I've got 16 years out of the other one, so I figure that's not too bad a run. And what I've done, I've got uh, 
two new tube stacks, I'm going to do both motors because um, false economy if you think that the other one's going to go much longer. Both of these engines have been served at the same intervals, they're both the same age, so if one side goes, chances are the other side's going to go pretty quickly as well. So um, all I've got to do is uh, install this new expensive looking, it looks like gold, it nearly costs that much, but um, I've got to put that back into the heat exchanger now. Pretty simple job though. Okay, now when you're putting these uh, tube nests back in, you'll notice one end's got an elongated hole, the other end's got a round hole. This is your inlet, so this has got to go to this end of the heat exchanger, and that hole has to line up with your water inlet. And the elongated hole is the outlet that goes to the back of the heat exchanger. So that's the way they've got to go in, so just be aware of that when you're uh, reassembling them. I'm just going to put this nest back in now, so same way as it came out, and through the back. Quite neat, but not too bad. Might just have to... Okay, that's got in very neatly. Okay, so this end, you'll notice the hole there. Um, that hole has got to be around so it's facing the water inlet have about the same amount out either into the heat exchanger. Okay, so that's the new one back in. Okay, it pays to get, uh, once you've got your holes lined up, and this is the hole you've got to line up uh, before anyone else, so just make sure that's in in rotation so it's picking up the inlet water. And then just um, make sure that it's protruding about the same amount either into the heat exchanger. It could be about the same. Once you've done that, I like to get a little bit of um, high temperature silicon and just um, smear it around, smear it around the tube stack and also around the heat exchanger itself just to help see, see all these buckets up, that's all. Okay, once you've done that, hold that in so you don't move it and then slide this bucket on here. Okay, now once you've got that one on, just tighten up your two hose clamps and that'll hold it in position while you put the other end on. When you're doing these hose clamps up too, it pays not to over tighten them. You've got to get them firm, but don't tighten them up that much that you're going to actually dent the tube nest because that'll probably uh, give you another problem. So they want to be firm, but uh, not not too over tight. Okay, so that, that's going to hold that in position now, so there's no movement there. So what I can do is just go through the same routine on the other end here. Put a bit of silicon around. Tube nest. That's what I'm using. Um, high temperature RTV. It's called Superflex by Loctite. It's not a bad product. Silicon based product. And now we can fit this boot. Beautiful. And do the hose clamps up, final job. Okay. All back together. Not a big job at all. Okay, so we've uh, mixed up the coolant. All it remains to do is uh, get it back into the heat exchanger. Okay, the last thing to do is make sure you turn your raw water back on, turn your salt water back on, put that back onto the motor. So uh, don't forget to do that. I don't know how many times I've done it myself. I've forgotten to turn 
the raw water back on and straight away you'll end up burning out uh, water pump impeller. So last job is just to go around and check, make sure that everything's turned back on and uh, all your fluids are right. Well, that was a job well done. The engines run all right, there's no leaks. All we've got to do now is take the boat for a run and make sure we're not still losing coolant. But I'm sure we fixed the problem.